Right, so WWE and TNA are clearly in cahoots with each other. They've given each other a big hug and now they're in a relationship. So I have written down 10 matches that I think we're actually going to see. Now the key word there is actually, I don't think we're going to get Roman Reigns <laughs> versus Moose. As much as I would love to see that, I think it's going to v lean very heavily towards NXT. So this is essentially a prediction video. And if I'm right, you can come and say, Simon, you're really smart. It's not true. But number 10 is the one that has been teased massively. And I think actually in terms of a predictor scale, this is more towards 100% than it is zero. Jordan Grace versus Natalia. Now, Natalia's contract is up, so that's going to be very interesting. But Jordan Grace keeps saying how she thinks Natalia is a Hall of Famer. And she is, by the way. Natalia in her dungeon, her new dungeon that her training camp that she's got, continues to have TNA wrestlers. They clearly all get on with each other, and we should just do this because it would be damn awesome. Everything Jordan Grace has done so far, both in TNA and under the WWE umbrella, has been brilliant. And I think if you do have this synergy between... <laughs> between the two promotions that's just, that's just you should do it's new versus old it's not really rookie jordan grace has been around forever but you know what i mean it's generation versus different generation and i just think they'd have an amazing match and again depending on what the future does hold that could be a match that jordan grace wins now that would be more impactful if we did it in nxt just because for obvious reasons but you could do it in tna as well and ultimately even if italia did beat jordan grace i don't think it would matter because we're in a crazy situation with this and even if politics are going to get involved when it comes to crossovers all the prohibited portal as we are calling it i'd rather get the match and maybe you finish that i don't think necessary is the right one than not get the match at all i'm so excited by every single match on here so yes i'm going to put quite i'm gonna put 97 probability likeness what does that mean probability of this happening jordan grace versus natalia unless there's some contract stuff i can't handle with that i don't work there anymore and then at number nine is also something else that i think we're going to do and it's joe hendry versus trick williams you can even put the nxt title on the line but joe hendry will lose and that's perfectly fine because again we would do this one in nxt everyone would go crazy there were i believe in joe hendry signs at the flipping pay-per-view in scotland the other day and I just think the impact of it and the what's the word I'm looking for novelty of it all that crazy stuff like how the hell is this happening and because Joe Hendry is just on a tear right now given his song and everything he has been doing in TNA that you would essentially be doing what we did with Jordan Grace and Roxanne Perez but just doing it for the men's belt you put it on a pay-per-view or a big NXT show Trick Williams is the absolute man he's got charisma coming out the whim wham kind of the same with Joe Hendry think of the promos think of everything they could do beforehand and even Joe Hendry did lose Trick Williams is the damn world champion at NXT there ain't nothing wrong with that you're allowed to lose to that person. And I think if you booked it in the right way, because it would be so entertaining and because so many people would get behind it and because you get such loud crowd reactions, everybody would actually come out better for it and you would get a better star. So I'm going to put this as 85% because I just look at it simply, right? If we did Jordine versus Roxanne, which we did do, well, who is the kind of comparison on the other side? Trick Williams, because he's the champ, and Joe Hendry, because it's over like over. Do it. And I think it should be the same for the tag belts too, because we should do ABC versus Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Now, I should have looked this up before I started this video, but I didn't. They probably all fought before, because all those guys have been on the scene for ages. But I just think Ace Austin and Chris Bay are so good, right? They're so fast. They're so quick. They can be technical. And it's the same for Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Like, I don't know who decided to put those two together, but it has been a work of art in many ways. And taking a kid and recalibrating him, not the right word, into Axiom has actually worked out really well, because it's got got a bit of an attitude on him and it's quite funny i find myself warming to him every single week so this is another one do i care who wins or loses an abc versus frazier and axiom match of course i don't i just want them to go 100 miles per hour i want them to do flippy dippy doo da and in terms of chris bay and ace austin it would just be awesome for them to get that focal point on a bigger stage and i think nxt is a bigger stage than tna just because more people watch the program so it's statistics but also wwe even the companies it has within that are bigger than tna so i really hope we do do that that's the kind of match that i want right it's something that everybody can benefit from i don't care who wins or loses i'll just be so excited to see it that i get warm and fuzzy in my tum tum so i will put a probability can't say that word of 90 percent. and if no one has even suggested that that's got to change right now and now we're just getting silly right but i like getting silly but i want to see two people come together where once again it's almost like the past looking at the present but actually it's the present looking at the future which makes no sense whatsoever it sounds like a terrible name for for an EP, but I would do Speedball Mike Bailey versus Javon Evans. And this is why I would do it. 
If you've never watched the Speed Boy Mike Bailey match, you have no idea what you're missing out of. This guy could have a good match with a broom. This guy is one of the best wrestlers in the world, and not enough people talk about it, right? Ever since he got over his American issues, you can hear him talk about it on the Talk is Jericho podcast. Very interesting listen. He has, well, not only has he been smashing it in TNA, but any indie booking he takes or any promotion he turns it up in on, it just gets it, man. And way back before the pandemic, I was very lucky to work on some cards with Mike Bailey. He goes around, he gives everybody advice, and he's never wrong. He's never wrong. He will tell you something, and you go, it's very crazy. Correct, Mr. Bailey. I don't know why I didn't do it that way. When it comes to Javon Evans, I think he's got a bit of an injury right now, but who the hell knows what the time frame on these are. He could be someone that becomes like a Mike Bailey, right? I mean, he's so early on his career. He's so damn good. He's so damn entertaining. I can't imagine he can't have a good match with everyone. So if you put them together, not only is it going to be awesome for us because we get to see the damn thing, but it could be a feud that goes on for the next decade, depending on what this relationship turns into be. And Mike Bailey will teach him so much that that is a huge benefit for, again, I think it'd be a benefit for Mike Bailey because he gets the TNA, uh, the NXT shine, whatever the hell it's meant to be. And Javon Evans, win, loss, draw, whatever, will come away being like, holy crap, did I just get an education in pro wrestling? And if the TNA WWE thing is going to go on for a while, and this way too disparaging, I don't mean like this, but TNA is going to be a bit of a developmental territory. I mean, that's not true. I don't mean it like that. But if we are trying to make sure everybody benefits, these are the kind of two people we should put together. Especially because the next two people I put together is just for my own entertainment. Hammerstone versus Oberfemi. I need to explain this one to you. It is big men slapping man meat and you also have the best types of the big men right and the man meat because hammerstone just google him right now my gosh just the best i told him this when he worked for progress i say it here too arguably the best for the in pro wrestling if you want to argue what you can you'd be crazy whereas Oberfemi is a physical specimen man but it's a different kind of physical specimen so you could absolutely build something around this you can put the north american title on the line i don't care i just want to see them run into each other and throw each other around and i've seen hammerstone do some crazy feats of strength with that nightmare pendulum especially i've also seen that with Oberfemi, who threw people off the top ropes into people that makes sense i'll make sure i put the clip there i'll try and probably get copyright claim won't do that but you can find it on the internet this would be the match i would most be anticipating they're just excellent and they're just awesome and in many ways maybe neither of them gets the credit they do deserve so if they can come together with a bit of a chip on their shoulder and make all this noise i'll be doing the dance of joy Make it happen. And because I'm a nerd too, do Josh Alexander versus Ethan Page. How can Ethan Page not go back to TNA in some sense, given what he did do there? These guys used to be tag team partners. You can tell that story. And then it's not just, oh my gosh, isn't it exciting that we are crossing these streams, which is always awesome, right? It's one of the best things about cross promotional stuff. All you have to do is go, <laughs> these two people are going to fight each other. But one match should have some extra stories and have some extra narrative. And that's what they can do. And maybe that helps Ethan Page in NXT because we can give him more of a backstory and we can tell about this journey that he's been on where he has been kicking all the ass maybe josh alexander can spin it that way too because we're talking about underrated talents josh alexander is probably top five in the world too maybe even top three he can work with anyone as well so maybe it ties into that so just do this one for me that's the most selfish egotistical arrogant thing i'll ever say it's my video and I just did it. Now, I actually started putting this video together before this one happened. It happened on a TNA show recently, but I'm still going to say it because it's got a 100% probability rating because it happened. Tay and Paxi versus Jordan Gray. And the reason I wanted to keep this on there is that one, it was smart. It gave Jordan her win back over the NXT people. But two, how do you expect to make Tay and Paxi a star if you do not put her in situations like this? I saw, I know it's the vocal minority and the crazies going, I can't believe it. chose Tay and Paxley to do this. Choosing Tay and Paxi to do this is a great idea. It gets the name of Tate and Paxi out there more. It gives her some experience. She was probably quite nervous going to TNA for the first time because she has come up in the NXT system, for lack of a better term. But that builds character and that builds confidence. And going in there with someone like Jordan Grace is only going to help you. So I was totally cool with this. And there'll be some other people I don't have on this list that should also be put into that kind of situation. And you may not think they're big stars right now, but there has to be, it can't just be fun and games in the moment, right? We should be looking to the future and Tay and Paxley has a massive upside. Like, we used to do ups and downs on what culture. I don't, I don't want to say I'm not a fan of her character, but I'm not the biggest fan of her character. I still think she does very well with it. But this will all go into her brain and allow her to adapt that into whatever the hell she wants and prepare her better for the main roster when she eventually gets called up. So I was totally cool with that. Let's do more of that. And also, I don't care. You can call me a loser. I am a loser. I know that. Let's start being nicest to wrestlers. You can still criticize them and constructively if possible. And you can still say you didn't like that thing, but going, oh, it shouldn't be Tay and Paxley. Good for Tay and Pax. That's what I say. Yeah, I wouldn't watch my content either. I've also got Eric Young versus Tony D'Angelo. 
just because I'm a sicko, as Tony Khan would say. I kind of think this may be a great way to get Eric Young back amongst the fold. Again, just go and read his comments about why he did leave. Hopefully WWE has changed enough now that he would feel comfortable coming back. I never really feel like he got his due there, so I would quite like that. And to me, I don't really know what I mean by this, but Tony D'Angelo's character is somehow very similar to the Eric Young character. In the sense, Eric Young could be goofy, he could be serious. I mean, he could just play anything. He was like the everyman of wrestling gimmicks. It's kind of the same with Tony D. He's meant to be leading the mafia he's killed people quite clearly when you listen to the story he throws people off bridges but he's also quite funny and he's quite entertaining he's also a very good wrestler and again that's another dude that doesn't get enough shout out for how good he is in the ring and you could argue that eric young kind of fits into that category too so this was just one when i was looking through rosters and it popped into my brain i was like yeah I want to do it. And I think that Eric Young has so much experience that it will help Tony D'Angelo too. I love Tony D. Because Tony D has such a stupid character, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm not disparaging it, but it is stupid. Like, if he runs the mafia, why is he Why is he a wrestler? What's the benefit there? Surely he needs to lay low as opposed to shout about this. But I don't know. There's just, uh, here's that awful word. Somebody shoot me in the head. There's just a synergy there. And I want to see it. 97% ludicrous. I've gone over the top with number two as well, but look, the Hardys are technically back in TNA now. So if we can work something out, can you imagine the pop, no matter where we do this? And please, because I love them so much and I need goofiness in my life, put them against Chase U. Now... (laughs) Chase you have been involved in some of the most ridiculous and therefore wonderful storylines in NXT, but they are good wrestlers, right? They are good professional wrestlers. They just are. And maybe sometimes we forget about that because they are running around trying to save their school after gambling debts with calendars. It's my kind of wrestling. But there'll probably be other people I'm not thinking about right now. You could bring in Frazier and Axiom to work with the Hardys because again, they would have been inspired by them. That would be fine too. This is more me just seeing the way the world is moving right now when it comes to wrestling and Jeff Hardy very quickly appearing in TNA and thinking maybe there's something else going on here. And look, you can say whatever you want about the Hardys. They're very inspirational. They are very groundbreaking. And so many people on that roster, it's kind of like a CM Punk situation when he came back. Even if they do come back within the guise of being TNA talents, everyone's going to want to ask for advice. And maybe that's their home. I know that's a stupid thing to say, but I've said it now. Just do the Hardys versus Chase U, because then we will be living in a world that I never thought was possible, but was always the world that I wanted to exist in. Which brings us to the last one, and this is the big one, mostly because if AJ Styles is flipping going to Noah, and he is entering that prohibited portal, surely he is going to do some TNA work, especially because, man, he is synonymous with that company. Without AJ Styles, I don't think I would have known what TNA was, back in the day and as he does move closer to retirement i could imagine he would like to go back to that place and maybe actually finally get the run that they never gave him because even though he's meant to be the guy i swear they never pulled the trigger properly so i would do aj styles versus moose maybe in a crazy world i would give aj styles the tna title right i'd make him the tna world heavyweight championship now it depends how wwe sees that because i truly believe if aj styles done with that a lot of people are going to tune into tna but ultimately wwe doesn't need to worry about tna and that's not an insult towards TNA. Right now, they have very much found their place. They're very much a niche. It's a very good show and you should watch it and their roster is out of this world. But I don't think even 100,000 people, if it even was that high, that would tune into Impact one week would affect WWE at all. They probably wouldn't even notice. And in terms of looking at it from a human perspective, I think AJ Styles getting that final run and taking on someone like Moose, a match I never thought I'd see, would be pretty damn cool. And I I would, here's that stupid word, I'd mark out for it, right? I'd be very excited. And Moose would benefit too. Everyone benefits from working from AJ Styles. Although Moose is great, right? And if this is the way that he gets into WWE, again, just go and read all the stories about the amount of offers that have been made to Moose. But yeah, I would love to see it. And I think ultimately, when we're just talking about AJ Styles, 100% he's going to be on a TNA show or involved in this in somehow. And the reason, obviously, that's going to carry more weight is not only because of his past, because he's a main roster talent. And maybe you get the Good Brothers doing something in NXT. I mean, I can't see a Cody or Randy Orton or someone like that or Solo. Maybe a Kevin Owens could be tempted or a Sami Zayn, but I don't think you need to do it with that. With AJ Styles, it makes so much sense. I think we should just get it done because it's fun to be a geek and it's fun to be a nerd. In that situation, my word, we can all geek a nerd out forever. Now look, that's just a big hodgepodge, so make sure you do a big hodgepodge in the comments below. There'll be people I've forgotten about too, so please shout their names out. It's important. Let's go fantasy booking. That's what wrestling's all about. Otherwise, like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the bell, ding, ding, notification bell. There's a video right there. Me probably talking about Drew McIntyre. Love the guy right now. Otherwise, it is grillamind.com forward slash Simon. You just go to Simon and get 10% off. These are fitness supplements that I use. I mean, I ain't in great shape right now because my stupid shoulder, but we're almost back. Otherwise, it is patreon.com forward slash Simon316. Simon316 Simon across all social medias, apart from TikTok, which is Simon J. Miller. But even threads is Simon Miller316. What a world. Simon Miller on Cameo. If you want a personalized video message, get your t shirts too. Pressing Tees and Samson Athletics. Otherwise, 
Gonna hold this up like I'm a singer for no reason. Zips quite far down. Look at me trying to be kinky. Regret. I'm just gonna end the video. All right, we got carried away. Take care, my friends. I'll talk to you soon.